Okay, I think it's probably time. So we would like to welcome you to the our wonderful uh, Neo J session. Very excited, and I'm personally, and I think less so. Also, we're immensely looking forward to hear all your your papers because we're very committed to bring together the narrative about the jades all around the world, the prehistoric jades. So uh, some uh, very lovely uh, jade access to get us in the mood here. So uh, please, please join us. My very important fellow uh, yes. organizer, uh, Lesse, you all know him, of course. So here, here sort of summarize the, the points to, to sort of really bring it together. What is the, the worldwide jade and jade-like minerals? And of course, there's various uses for them. Uh, they can be tools or whether they're functional or not. That is, of course, the incredibly interesting <laughs> question. And uh, adornments or other carved objects. And of course, it's, uh, it's, it's generally, generally believed um, that there are mediators of entanglement. And this is why we archaeologists are so obsessed with them. Well, uh, people of the past might not necessarily have formulated that way. But for them, it's uh, incredibly important. There's particular physical and visual characteristics. And of course, the fact that it's so incredibly difficult to get hold of, as we all know. So that all added to the value that people uh, gave to it in the past. So and we want to look by bringing together uh, presentations from all over the world. Uh, we want to bring in this new pattern and really push forward the research and looking at many different uh, aspects. And this is why I love it that there are some very technical papers as well as more the social value kind of papers. So anything from quarrying, exploitation, distribution, production, the whole chain operatoire, the social political value, and also how that actually matters. What is the impact of the societies at the time? Yeah. So I think it's also important to say that although we are focusing on the, the jade, mm -hmm. uh, I think that some of the problems that we discuss uh, is also general problems within uh, raw material studies of certain points. So we're also very pleased that there are other scholars who's going mm -hmm. to talk about marble and yeah. also amphibolite access in Central Europe. So yes, exactly. So welcome to that. So indeed, jade and jade-like, and even completely contrasting kind of stones is also very interesting. So uh, what we're going to talk about later, of course, these uh, these are also kind of taken from our introduction. So how, what is actually the impact that the jade has in prehistoric societies, and also how it brings about the changes, and uh, very important, of course. Uh, the whole organization that is involved with the, the routinized practice of the, the jades. So it's very interesting to see if, if the reaction to this is the same everywhere. And maybe it actually depends on the development of the society or the region or the time scale that we're talking about. Because, of course, change over time is also a very important aspect. So, yeah, what happens? Do we get special places where people come together, these hubs? And uh, will, will there actually be special rituals that also may have an impact on changing society. That is a very, very important uh, aspect. And this, this is where we're very interested. We're all talking about jade. But what if our assumption is wrong? And it's not necessarily just the jade that everybody was crazy about. So uh, I've already heard some hints that some people will say, well, so I'm very looking forward to that, to uh, those papers. And uh, of course, very, very important, we need, need to make sure that we have, before we can even start the, the, you know, the discussion on the theory and the social value, of course, we have to be really, really certain on our methodology. So the provenance um, and, of course, the social and archaeological context. So, yes, we, we're going to look also at the very technical side, petrographic, geochemical. Chen obviously, is incredibly important. So these, these aspects, of course, all come together. And that's why it's very, very nice that we have various approaches and particularly with the Caribbean we're going to have the full range of approaches there which is, uh, is very very promising so um, let's yeah hear. okay so just a uh, thing about the terminology of J I mean J is an, this is an old uh, terminology and uh, it actually consists of, of two different uh, uh, minerals the jade itite, which is um, a rare source worldwide it's uh, harder and uh, the chemical composition is a bit different to the other um, used terminology within jade, na namely the nephrite and trimolite, which is more common. 
that are a bit more soft and, and it has a, a different chemical composition. So, uh, uh, and the hardness is also a little bit different. The gravity is different on these uh, jadeite mm -hmm. and nephrite. And <clears throat> what's in particularly uh, interesting uh, when we go deeper into it, is that you can see that the crystals here in the jadeite type is more interlocked, so it's a much tougher material. It's much harder to break compared to the nephrite. And of course, the color is sometimes similar, but um, it has variation. And the use of uh, jadeite type is, of course, also uh, worldwide, both in Europe and Asia, but also in the Caribbean. And, uh, and nephrite is also uh, common uh, in many places in the world. So shall so, I see the, the distribution map? Yeah, spectrum? so here you see the distribution map of the Jedi type. And normally we see uh, three different places of the Jedi type where, where there has been studies uh, of uh, Jedi type and the network of it and also provenance analysis. The first one is in the Caribbean. We're going to hear more about that more. later. And then, of course, there's Europe. Europe there's been yeah. a huge study by Petra Kahn yeah. and his, uh, and his team. team. And, uh, and that's almost over, but they're still in the process of, of doing more analysis. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there's an, a new, uh, a new um, area, which is the Eastern Mediterranean, which I'm going to talk about mm -hmm. uh, opening up. So, and then we have uh, in the, the Asian part, especially Japan, but also in China, where there are extensive studies as well going on. So, uh, and then we have the, the nephrite uh, sources, as, as you can see, they're more common. And I mean, in, in, not in all these places, we see use of, uh, of, uh, of nephrite, but uh, in many, many places, um, Unfortunately, some of the sources, I mean, in general, nephrite and jadeite type, we know some of the sources, but we certainly don't know all of them. So there's plenty to do in the future there. Yeah, yeah we have our work cut out for us here. Yeah. So some of the questions that we will be actually asking also in the discussion, we all know that there's special characteristics that they have. It's tough, it's really hard to work. The color, especially green, is, is a color that's very often used when it comes to jade, and I, I think I'm very curious to see if this is worldwide the case, and of course extremely scarce, all adding to the value. And very often the interpretations, well, the interpretations are always items of symbol, items of power, of prestige, items of network. But I think it's interesting to ask the question mark, to what extent is that the case? Because in many cases it's, it's uh, based on modern ethnographic studies, for example, and uh, also in many cases, for example, the jades, the, the jade axes in, uh, in Europe and also a lot of the jades in Japan that I will be talking about, they're, they're sometimes based on a few very well-known, very well-published cases. And all the rest, you know, the, the cases that are not so spectacular, just kind of pushed under the rug somewhere. So I think this is a very interesting question. To what extent and what, what do we see and what do we think about that? So uh, this is our session program. Uh, first, we will have Irene. Irene will be talking, um, making a small comparison between chi Chinese and European jade and mostly speak about uh, the Chinese uh, uh, nephrite. Then we have uh, Sebastian talking about the, the Caribbean. Then Alice will give us a very wonderful metallurgical chemical um, characterization. After that, Kaspar. So we have mostly in our first half, we have a lot of Caribbean, as you can see. Um, <coughs> And then uh, Kaspar and Alice again. Alice is uh, making us happy with two wonderful presentations today. Then, uh, because one of the, the papers is missing, we have actually quite some time for questions and a little bit of discussion already. So, and also if you run over a little bit, it's not a really big disaster. So one of the papers fell out. So we have half an hour before the coffee break to, to discuss, have questions, and also if there's little points that you want to point out more that you didn't really have time for in your presentation just yet. And then after the break, first there will be Tom, and uh, he will be talking a lot uh, from useware analysis on uh, axes in the Caribbean. I'm personally very much looking forward to this. Uh, then I'll be talking about the, the Jap Japanese prehistoric jades, which are not Neolithic, but before Neolithic. 
and then we will have the team uh, talking about the marble. And um, after that, and, and I have to make this very clear, in the program, this was a stopgap. My name was put as author. I am very emphatically not the author. I just did this to make sure because of EAA rules being very, very, you know, predicate. So uh, I am definitely not. So instead of Bernardini, uh, Manuela is presenting. She's the supervisor, right? Of, uh, yeah, so she will be presenting. I'm not author. They are the author very much so about uh, the jade in uh, Caput Adri. And then finally, we have uh, Lasse talking about this wonderful new research in the East Mediterranean and the Cycladic and how that all distributed and circulated. And then we have to, quite a lot of time for final questions. We can address the points that we just said, but we can hopefully also discuss avenues for future collaboration, future research, and other uh, ways. I think this is for our final discussion slide, right? Yeah. Yeah. So this, uh, these are the things to just structure it. We will get back to this slide well, for a discussion. Talk a little bit about yeah. it okay. because then, then people would know uh, okay, what we're, what we're, how yeah. we facilitate them, uh, the, the final discussion. So first of all, as we were talking about the methodology, mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's very important because otherwise we won't get any further with the actual interpretation. So the discussion of the methodology uh, is very important. People have been, been trying to solve that in different ways, using different methods. Uh, and of course, there's always also the discussion of using destructive versus non-destructive methods, and also using the, the stationary methods and the, the, the mobile methods. Uh, what are the ups and downs and what's the negative side with that? And then, uh, yeah, so that's the main methodological part. Uh, and then for the interpretation? Yeah, of our interpretation, what do we know and how do we know it and what do we think we know about it? <laughs> so, uh, very interesting, why did people bother, you know, do going for the jades? Is it, is, is it uh, some secret accessibility, some secret knowledge? Is it the, the, the people that they know very much <laughs> today? Is it some kind of big mythological framework that this is a resource of the gods? You can't hoard it. That would be really rude. So somehow you have to give access to other people's, other groups of people's as well. And of course, uh, who, who was behind it? What level of, of social organization <coughs> was behind it? And does that actually make a difference? For example, there could be th theoretically a huge difference between my prehistoric Jomon people who are relatively egalitarian and then sort of the later Neolithic of China, which very much was not egalitarian, so to speak. So to what extent are all these kinds of things uh, relevant? And then finally, incredibly important is jade resources. They're, they're an incredibly important cultural resource. Yes. And it has and to be protected. How to protect it, because some of them are really fragile, and also how to publish the stuff without being too specific, because yeah. there will be rock hounds and people yeah. wandering around destroying some of these really fragile yeah. prairie sites around the world. Yeah. In some countries it's really, really bad. We've seen examples In Burma, of that. for example, it's and incredibly Guatemala, bad. In Guatemala. So it's an industry. Uh,